Right, a few gaps left, so we'll do the offset again. Uh, you can also do offset, not as much. And you'll be left with the gaps. In some cases you might want to keep the gaps, but we just want to fill in the shape. This one. If I copy that into a new layer, <clears throat> uh, then I can just erase bits quite easy. Take that print there. Stretch it. Doesn't have to be perfectly touching it, and I can go over it all in the end anyway and fix it all up. Smudge brush. Different layer, merge down. Copy that into new layer and fit that place. Ah, it's a little bit too similar to that. I might be able to flip it horizontally and get something decent, or that's going to work better, isn't it? Fill in that gap or something. So I think it's okay to flip horizontally because the light is coming directly from above. So I can flip that one and change it up a bit. And merge layers. I'm trying to find bricks that don't look like um, like anything nearby it, even though this one is exactly the same as that. So I'll just flip it that way horizontally and I can 
can always change it up here. So grab some color, just over it a bit. Put some line down it. So you could leave it like that, right? But that's gonna look crap, like hair lines. You wanna actually go in and do something with that. Just a little bit of smudge there. See, I've left the right hand side sharp, but the left hand side, I'm kind of giving it different depth by just you know, smudging bits around. Let's put this on as well, actually. And then same with that. You can just leave one edge sharp and then just, so I'm leaving this side of it sharp, like untouched and then just pulling to the side. You can do a little bit here and there, just for a little, something interesting. But make it work, you know, make it work with everything else going on. Uh, I'm just going to add rain or clouds to that one. Okay, so it's going to see through, but oh, that's down. So that's tileable as far as I can see. If I do the offset and do 1024, 1024, I shouldn't see any line. So I don't actually see any line, but I need to go over it and, you know, finesse it a bit and just fix everything. So I'm kind of zoomed up here. This is the bit that will take the longest. Make sure the bits. I don't need to worry too much about the edge, um, because I'll do the offset again, so I can just work on a little bit and a little bit high smudge value and just fix up some of these bits. And then just you know start to finish it up. There's some things we can do at the end as well, like a high pass filter or any sort of uh, filter effects to bring it a bit more interesting stuff, but we'll do that at the very end. And change, change almost every brick up as much as you can so that it doesn't look like any other one, knowing that everything's gonna work in now. Going over and checking everything. Ooh. So there's always an easier way to do stuff and the easiest way to do this would, would be to sculpt all the bricks individually and put them in the right sort of formation and probably just leave the border and bring it into Photoshop and then just patch up the, the gap in between by copying and pasting some of the images. You could do it that way or um, like in ZBrush, it's got a kind of tileable function kind of gives you that from 3D models or you generate the textures through something like Substance Designer um, but that itself is a big learning curve this is the most approachable way put it that way it's the most easiest way because I've used Blender I'm using Photoshop you can use whatever does you know smudge type stuff Oh, you watch that tangent there. The tangents when you sort of continue off one thing into the other. Like if I was to do that, be a tangent. So that's why I'm just going to patch that up again. Um, so the lightest tone here is that one, so I can always use that 
to make little highlights. So I can make a like highlight here, and that means this is a recess inside here is like a groove, and this is the edge catching the light from above. So I could even assume that there's uh, a darker patch kind of there, and that's the top side of it, and this is a big kind of core sort of. Uh, notch been taken out of the brick and I can actually do something like this and because you see all this other stuff working in that kind of light it will start to make sense when I make it look more subtle and again I'm just blending one side of it the side that matters and then keeping the other side quite sharp So when you zoom out, you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to tell that I didn't just draw that, you know, because it matches the light everywhere. But if I was to suddenly decide to not use that color and go for something like a highlight like that color and start coloring it and then just doing something like that, and then like a little bit of smudge, go, okay, that's it, that's it, I'm done. That's gonna stick out like a sore thumb because nothing's that bright in this image. So you have to be content aware, just like that, that little uh, spot heel tool that Photoshop uses. It's, it's actually trying to analyze patterns in the image. trick is uh, don't worry about patience um, the trick is to come out of something knowing that you've learned a lot of things not not just patience but like turning all these brush strokes into an exercise and getting good at that certain thing it can be patience for sure doing all this but it'll make you uh, understand these shapes quite well. So the question is, does it tile? Yes, it tiles. So if I was to do define pattern from this document, I can do test tiling, right? I can basically do a fill layer. So pattern and change this to 25 so basically tiling so four times 50 percent would be four times yeah so one two one two three four you know and then 25 would be four by four so it looks pretty good um the only thing it's not making it that interesting is some aren't darker than the other ones if I was to copy the layer and just levels it down a bit. Pull this one down a wee bit. Right, and that's made the whole thing a little bit darker. Add a mask in and invert the mask and then I can actually paint white in the mask to make some of these bricks a little bit darker. So let's take that one. Right. And maybe this one, just a few, it doesn't have to be all of them, half of them are in like that, I just want to dot a few, It's just a tiny bit darker as well. So 
So I merge that down. Define the pattern and try fill the pattern and change it to 50. So now you'll see there's just the occasional one that's slightly dark. And even though that's cool, I'll do maybe that again. So I'll copy the whole layer and control L and drag this down a bit and maybe even this so it picks up a few little highlights better. But it's darker um, and shinier I guess because I pulled the lighting up out. And just draw in some more. So I'm drawing, I should be drawing in that. Okay, without any opacity in the brush so it's giving me a solid colour. So I'm drawing a solid white into the mask, which allows that darker version through. And I even take this darker one already and make it even darker. Let's do these two together. Gonna merge that down now. Uh, this little brick down here is looking a bit odd, so I'm gonna do something cool with that. I'm take this tone and kind of make a crack like this, just crack it in the little bits. It doesn't look like a good crack at the minute, but if I press four for some opacity, make this slightly bigger, and I think of the underside of that bit and just like. A chamfer at the bottom, so it's going to come in more here, right? A little bit more there, some here, some there, some here, and there, right? And I've not done the top, so I'm going to pick this brighter one and just do the top. Like that, and then this one it it up a bit so it doesn't look so obvious and then just like variations of some of the tones that I've used and in different brush sizes and just sort of detail that up a bit change the thickness of the crack and you know add a little kind of deviations coming off it so that it doesn't look so like a sticker like a bad sticker and you want to try and make it work Maybe make a bit dark in there. Maybe there's a little kind of crumb here. It's all been kind of bashed into this rock. Right, so you're going to see this one broken rock every now and again, but it's kind of interesting. Let's get some of that lighter tone in there. So the way it works, if you get a crack like that, Right, so the crack's grooving into the rock, right, and then the light is going to catch the bottom lip of it because the light's coming from the top. Right, and you might even have like a darker lip up here because there's different sort of levels of crack. You've got the main line crack, but it might have chipped away at some other bits, so it might have chipped away a bit here. When, it, when this crack happened, it might have just like poof, threw a bit off. So you get this little secondary crack and you might even get a secondary little highlight here. Maybe even a little extended bit of that crack. And yeah, just kind of stuff like that. Bring the background tone in. A little highlight will catch that edge a bit more. Down a little bit. Maybe there's a little chip here. So you see if I was to draw the line like that and the light above it, it suddenly looks like it's coming out the way. And I'm just going to make, make that kind of more subtle. So I choose this colour and just gently go over it a bit just to fade it. It's not as heavy as, as that. So when I zoom out, hopefully that doesn't look too bad. It doesn't stand out like a sore thumb or anything. If it does, then you just sort of tone it down with maybe a kind of softish brush. 
just sort of go over bits and you know throw that into the shadow under here maybe this needs a little bit of an edge if it's not quite working just try throwing some extra tones into it you know because some of the some of these ridges are kind of coming out like that so that will catch the light so imagine this bit's kind of coming out towards us I can put a nice big chunk of light on that and then sort of smudge it blend it up a bit okay I'm just looking for some bad bits Just need you know that something. Uh, another cool thing you can do is copy the whole thing, and levels adjust it down. Like that, right? So that's a darker version of the same thing, and then add uh, a mask. Go into the mask by alt clicking on it and do render clouds, because cloud render clouds is tileable. So we don't need to worry about that uh, edge affecting anything. Every time you use that, it's going to be tileable, right? So it's added all this dirt and noise on it, but it's a bit too uniform. So you might want to do Control L on that and then pull, you know, this way or that way. Right? You might just want the occasional bit like that. Right? Just the odd bit like that. And then say OK. And then we can take that whole layer and put it in a folder and give the folder a mask. And now I can paint in the mask where I don't want it. So I can paint black. I say, right, I don't really want that there. Uh, don't want it there. Don't want it here. I don't want it blending in like from brick to brick like this. Because I want it to be unique to that brick. I don't want it to be, you know, continuing over like a virus. Because it's more of a defect that was in the brick before it was placed there. You know, like here, it's continuing over. I just want to get rid of it in one of them or two of them, whatever one's adjacent. Because these are things that were on the brick before they were on the wall. Right, so I'm just going to merge. Uh, merge visible right and that should all be tileable and stuff so these are just like little defects that are on the brick I can go ahead and go in there and even like enhance them up and go all right I'm gonna play with that and give that a bit of an edge there just a little tickle at the edge and right, just do some interesting stuff with that uh, press one of your numbers for less opacity, so it's three, two, uh, and then a little bit of the smudge just to sort of blend it in a bit. And get even more interesting stuff. Press seven or eight, and then I'm going to add a little bit of this tone here and just add in a little kind of highlight. That. And then a little bit of smudge here. That's just another interesting thing you can do. Right, so that's that. Uh, I'm going to copy the whole thing again. Do filter, other high pass. Now, this gives me a kind of, <coughs> a kind of crease map. See the higher I put push this, the more it's kind of trying to detect edges. And you can get that to a nice point. Like that, right? And then do control L to really tighten that up. You can even move this one about. And then change the mode to overlay. And that will kind of like 
enhance a lot of bits. And you can see really obviously this being repeated a bit a billion times. Really want to get rid of that. Uh, you can change the opacity of that layer. It just acts like a kind of sharpen. Right. I'm just going to do it a tiny wee bit and then merge that down. And then I'm going to fix this these bits up. So I'll just use the, the spot heel and just go over it like that. It's the quickest way to do it. And I'm going to take it away almost everywhere that I see it. Especially if it's close to another one, which they all probably are. Maybe I'll leave one in. <laughs> it's just the most obvious thing that you that I can see when I look at it. I'll leave that one in. Get rid of these. So just a little spot here just picks it picks something at random in the image. Right, that's pretty much all of them gone. And if you really wanted to make this good, you would just go over everything and you know just fix the other bits up that are bad, that don't look good, don't work for you. It's interesting little deviations that you get in rocks, and it's kind of fine to do random stuff because you get away with it. But as long as you don't go lighter or darker than the whole image, it'll be fine. And then again, you just want a little sharp bit. So I'm going to pick the brightest color, the brightest tone, and I'm just going to get a tiny little fraction brighter just to make sure it's the brightest. And I can like enhance up little edges here and there. It's very subtle, just a little kind of scratch along a line. Just catch a little edge here and there. Another thing you could do that's similar to that is copy the whole layer again. Right, so duplicate the layer and go to sharpen and just press that a couple of times until you get something quite noisy and sharp like that and then just take the color out of it so just make sure that's like that and I'm just going to do a little bit of a oil paint filter on it just to get rid of the noise tiny bit like that and you see it gives me all these little nice little swirls and things so now I can reduce that and like bring it in slightly. And it gives it a nice pattern. And suddenly it's starting to look like painterly. So I'll merge that down. Now using that oil paint filler could upset the edge. So I'm gonna do the offset just to make sure that I didn't do it too much. So do that. Uh, I might want to set a grid up so that it's compatible. So I know where the middle is. So I'll just do grids and slices. I do five twelve. That's a compatible number. And I can see where the middle is now. So if I go there, just turn that off. You can see ever so slightly that line there. So what I can do is I can actually take a copy of that whole thing, and I'll just do that filter on it again. Where's the middle? It's so subtle it might not matter, but because I can see it. Right, so I'll use that oil filter again. Uh, the stylized oil paint. And I'll put it a bit lower. I'll do 0 0.2, 0 0.2. Right, it's a bit too much, actually. Stylized oil paint, 0 0.05. It's got rid of a lot of that noise, but it's it's too much. Anyway, um, the easiest thing to do is just to go in and just check check how bad it is. If it's really bad, just kind of 
sugar it up a little bit with the uh, with the smudge. You can see it across the way quite bad here, but that's going to be it's likely going to be seen um, once you start to look at that texture in the game. So just make sure you can fix that up a bit. <clears throat> but it's definitely made the, the bricks quite interesting to look at. Uh, so up close, I can kind of see it here. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah, I can kind of see it there, and I guess I could spot heal most of it away, just as long as I don't do it in a kind of obvious point like there. Oh, no, that was okay. Um, sometimes it just doesn't do it right, but spot heal is not too bad. I'm using it in a very subtle way. If I use it there, I did it okay, but sometimes it just doesn't. It's, it's been actually really good today. <laughs> it's a good day for spot brush, spot heel brush thingy. Alright, and just check across this way. that landed more in a subtler spot but you can start to see it So that's the only thing you need to watch. Some things affect the edges, like blur will affect the edges, um, and that, that oil paint uh, type effect, that will affect the edges. So just be careful with those. Uh, I'm gonna do one more thing to help enhance it. So I'll copy and paste it, and I'll level it up like that. Right. Maybe a bit there. Just want to check how that looks, and I just want to play with the opacity a bit, just to idealize the tone, and copy and paste it again, and I'll do another levels adjust. This time, kind of making it so all the the dark areas really show like that, and I can do a blur on it. So a good size blur, like that. Now that's not going to tile too well at the edges, but I can do it again and fix the the edge bits. So what I want to do is add a mask and invert it, right? And I want to change that mode to multiply, so we're multiplying over. We don't make it look blurry. And I paint with a nice big white brush. 
like this and that will kind of give me some some shadow sort of thing in between that will do that. Um, right like that You see I've got a paint in here like this. I just want to level that somewhere hitting the edge. And do a blur on it. Alright, so that's only affected most of this middle part and I don't want that as much. So you can choose how much you want that. And that's one way to do that, but the easiest way is just to uh, do a levels adjust, bring this up a bit, get that full range, uh, is to change your brush, so paint with black and then do multiply, and then if you need brush, uh, Photoshop will catch up with me, It'll be too fast. It go. Uh, you can basically paint over those areas but it's not as good and do you want to turn certain things off you could go over bits like that and just make the odd bit dark or just adding your own little kind of shadows and things To make it look like this rock was sticking out more, you could add a little shadow under it like that. And believe it or not, that would look like that stone sticking out because it's casting a shadow down the way. You know, I could do one here. In fact, if I do all that and a new here. Do that in a new layer and I've changed the layer to multiply and then put the drawing back to normal and I can just draw where I want my little cast shadows. You know, is it what's it affecting both sides or just this side? This one sticking out and overlapping this one. You know, you need to kind of choose ones that look like they're already sticking out a bit, otherwise it won't really work. If you want to make it look like it's really coming out, you can cast the shadow further. It's just a fake shadow. You can imagine it's baked, like a baked shadow. And even, you know, cast a little shadow beside it there. So working in that layer is good because then I can erase some bits. Make sure you're using a soft brush. So let's see how that all looks. I will just merge visible and define pattern 
and then see if it looks as a pattern. 50%. So there you go, it looks like those little bricks are kind of kicking out a little bit. Um, you can even make the, the tops have more highlight. I'm just going to undo and add another layer. So if you call this like shadows and then we can do highlights, you can actually get like the white brush here and change that to a uh, screen. Screen's good for white tones and multiply is good for dark tones. So the ones that have got that, they're going to get a little bit more light hit them at the top. And that will really kind of set them off. Let's change that. I'm just going to dot in about so I get some interesting features. Slightly bigger brush, lower opacity, and I'm going to turn that off. That's the sizing one. I'm just going to go over tops a bit more and make it a little bit of a harder brush. Change that back. Back to the shadows, switch this to black, and then I can paint some more. Uh, back to highlights, switch that to white, and more here. So I'm going to merge everything and it's just going to have a quick look at this bit because it looks like this brick is just kind of floating. So I'm going to add some little bits. So let's say I want to make my own little rock in here. Start with that. Pick a couple of tones that, you know, happen at the bottom. Some tones that happen at the top and then just make the brush really small. And just like do little details. Eventually, it will have a similar amount of detail as any of these other rocks, and it will just work. So, just in case I build it up to that point, even these little kind of swirls and striations I've got happening, if I add those in, and that'll look cool. I just want to kind of wedge in here. zoom out just to check that it works but I know that this bit isn't sharp enough just going to sharpen that up like that and put some of this darker tone at the back that's not too bad uh, so pick this colour do a kind of shape here doesn't have to fit perfectly, it's just enough to sort of lodge in between these shapes. It doesn't have to be like that, like perfect, symmetrical all the way around. Uh, we just call it equidistant all the way around, but it needs to just touch something just to like say this is wedging, wedging in. And then you can take some tones, 
to the bottom part, some tones into the top part. All right, some of this might be causing a little shadow in there, so you won't get any highlight, but we'll get some here. And then just like little kind of grooves and details, just go crazy. Just make sure your brush is small enough that you get the right amount of details compared to everything else. these little kind of straggles and shapes. Now if you look at the way I'm drawing, I'm kind of drawing like this, then like this, and a little bit like this. You know, I'm kind of doing all shapes, but I'm also trying to mimic the shape of things. So I'm kind of all over the bit, and the pressure that I apply to the pen depends on uh, how much I want to sort of see that happen, you know, how much of the shape I'm mimicking and things. Okay, it's just a little bit I'm trying to gauge it because all these edges are like really super sharp and mine's isn't, so I just need to throw that in there and I think it will just eventually hold. Even if it's just a little bit off like that, it's, it's mimicking what, what's happening in the rest of this image. All right, so that should that should work as a tileable texture. If you want to use that, then you can. If you want to make up your own, then that's also awesome. Um, okay. That's a tangent when that goes into there, but I think it's only happening there really. Everywhere else is fine. And there's a few bits that repeat itself, but there's enough variation in this now. Uh, well, another cool thing you can do actually is you can copy the layer, right? And do a gradient map, gradient map. What that's gonna do is gonna analyze the grayscale of the image and then turn it into this. So you can basically get the dark tones, turn them to this color, the light tones turn to this color. So we can go ahead and do something like, all right, we want some browns in there and some like greens for moss, if you really wanted that. All right, so browns and greens, uh, you can move that there. Uh, maybe there's some rusty tones like that. Uh, Make that a slightly different green. Maybe not as crazy as that. Right, imagine something like that. Okay, and then I can say to that just affect the next layer not the bottom one just this one and then change the opacity of it so it's just subtle but I can also go into this I'll click on it and do render clouds so it only happens every now and again I'll put the opacity up a bit and you get this kind of like two-tone effect and the cool thing about that is you can go straight back into here and say, oh, I don't like that green. It's too vivid. So I'm gonna make that, that. And I don't like this anymore. Gonna make it less obvious. Maybe towards blue. Right, like that. And then, <clears throat> You can take these two and put them in a folder, right? So that's you get that one little group that just changed the color and then just sort of change the amount of that. You can duplicate the group and then change the the clouds to a new one. You get something random each time, right? And then go back into this 
and do a different do a different one do you know some different tones so you get a mix of two different mixers if you will um, Let me make this like green at the top. Right, and then can change the opacity of that effect and then the opacity of the actual whole layer itself. You can change the mode to multiply. And then add a mask to the whole group and then go into the group, uh, go into the that and do clouds. Right, come back out and you can see the effect that's happen happening with it when you toggle off and on you can see what different stuff does as if you want that you know you might not not need all that stuff I quite like that if I would like and then just you know bring it back a little bit you might just want a tiny bit of colour in it, just a tiny bit. So you just bring that opacity right down. Right, and at the end of the day, if you don't want it, just merge visible and just do control U and just take the saturation back and you pretty much got it back the way it was. Apart from some of the mapping might have made bits darker. Alright, so you can see there's still a bit of colour in there and then you can tone it back. You can Q shift it to see if different tones work. And if you don't like that, just, you know, undo and get rid of all of this or put it all in a folder and then just like toggle it and see the difference. Or again, add another mask to that and then go in there, do some clouds and the labels are just that so that it only happens to certain bits. See it happening some bits there. The tiny bit making it a little bit dirty. And then you can take that group, put it in another folder, and add a mask to that group. And then I can invert it. So nothing happens now until I paint white. This is how Substance Painter basically works as well. Like you can group all these masks within each other and there's different masks doing different stuff. And eventually, you know, you can control it. So I can basically paint with a nice crazy brush. So I've got all these kind of grungy brushes and I can paint somewhere where that will come back. You can barely see it because, right, that's not the best brush. Make it uh, something a bit more noisy. Yeah, that's perfect. And then, oops, make sure the mask. And then, see, I can draw in some of that noise now. It's hard to see because everything's so opacity down so much that you can barely see anything. Right, uh, I can bring that up. Just bring everything up so we can see what's happening. Bring that up. Cool, so now I've got control of it completely and this one mask so I can press X to swap it and then X to bring in white and paint where I want it. It's a bit vivid, I guess that vivid light mode isn't good. I'll try multiply or color burn. No. So just making it too weird. That's quite nice. Uh, and I can even come in here and like even just change whatever's not working again, just change it to a different color. Right, and this is all being controlled by that, uh, by that there. So if I cross it out, you can see exactly what I'll get. So that shift and click on it. Like the mask is no longer controlling it. It's just all going through. 
so I can kind of control that now if I paint white and bring that back in. Just need to stay away from the edge because if I paint it up here it's not happening down here so it's not continuing. So I just need to be sure that all my masking is within that edge. Okay, I merge it all together or let me just copy that layer, right? Copy that, put it at the top and you can toggle it and see the difference. So that's what I've added. It's just going to be more apparent when it tiles, so I'll show you the difference. I'll merge all of this, merge layers. Right, so we get the clean one. I call this clean. I call this dirty. Right, and I'll basically do the thing pattern here and find a pattern here. And if I fill pattern, let's do let's do thirty three percent, so we get the tile three times. So that's the clean one, and that's the dirty one. So you can see that patch happening again and again. But you see lots of things happening again and again. I mean, I could do with them maybe another brick being popping out there, but you've pretty much seen the whole process <laughs> from Blender. Uh, using the sculpt stuff. Um, and I forget, but at least it's streamed. I'll transfer the stream to YouTube. And that way you can see the whole process before Twitch forgets it. Cool. I'm going to end this stream. I'll talk to you, talk to you in a minute. Uh, what a journey has been indeed. It's been epic proportions. And I only sculpted what two or three bricks, and I've got a full wall from that. Um, so you can kind of see how that wall might look. Let's try 50% actually, even that's quite nice. There's some nice little sharp bits there, but it's good enough to work. Cool, I'm going to end the stream now, and I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye.